friends on the internet, friendernet. I'm Robert Evans. This is Behind the Bastards, the podcast. Bad people tell you about them. It's part two of the John McAfee episode with me today, as within part one, is Lacey Mosley. Lacey, how's you doing? Um, I mean, I'm doing okay. Lacey, you are, again, a comedian, <laughs> actress, yes. scam goddess. Yes. And uh, you ready to hear some more about John Ooh, McAfee? Ooh, I'm loading up. I'm, I'm ready. J-Mac. All right. It just gets worse. Yeah, we, we ended on uh, drugging and raping a woman. Ooh. Uh, so <laughs> bleak. Not a lot else for it to go, uh, yeah. but down. And it, it was a well, laugh of awkwardness. Yeah. Um, ugh, what a bad dude. It's it's going to keep going down. So I forget when I first became aware of John McAfee. It might have been 2011 when I first read the Wired article that mm. I quoted from you know, earlier. Uh, I remember being endlessly amused that the guy behind the world's most irritating antivirus program was a ridiculous madman, off inventing drugs in the jungle or something. You know, that was that was neat. Like we all use McAfee antivirus and knowing that like right. this shitty program that we all hate, like the guy who made it is just a maniac out in the Crazy jungle. Crazy I hadn't heard about the rape or anything yet. No. That wasn't out until 2016. So I was a fan of John McAfee for a while. Right. I when we yeah. started the story, I was like, oh yeah, what a great scammer. Started yeah. up, you know, just like all most scammers do and then yeah, it took a real turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so, a bad guy. McAfee abandoned his jungle compound shortly after the Belizean government raided him, and of course he assaulted uh, Dr. Adonisio, uh, at least allegedly assaulted. Uh, and he moved back to his beach house on Ambergris K full-time with an ever-expanding cast of young women. Uh, he gave each of them their own bungalow, called them his girlfriends, and according to the girls, he paid them to poop in his mouth through hammocks. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I just dropped that one out there. Oh. <laughs> now... That's gross. Much is. But they're adults. He's paying them. It's whatever. Compared to the rape, it's, it's whatever. I'm not going to judge right. somebody for no. having a thing. If like, you have a, that's a specific, yeah. If that's your thing, if they're consenting adults and getting paid, whatever. I'm yeah. not gonna, I'm not going to la- labor on it too long. It's co- so it's he, kooky, but whatever. He, but he was the poopy. He was. Take, he was. He was the guy pooping. He was. T- oh no. Oh he, no. Who's the guy being pooped into? He was yeah. the person being pooped into. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. Well, I mean, at least he wasn't pooping on people. At least he wasn't pooping on people. Whatever. Right. It, it's his thing, okay? That part's fine. Um, now, that fact didn't come out until two, 2016 and the release of Gringo, a documentary about John McAfee. Uh, accurate title. Yeah, accurate title, and we will be talking about that more in a little bit. For now, I want to try to stay as chronological as it is possible to be with a tale of John McAfee, because, of course... He lies about himself constantly, so yeah. it was a lot of work on the back end here, being like, "How? Did, what's the timeline? How, what actually <laughs> happened here? I may have gotten some stuff mixed up timeline-wise. It's probably not perfect, but I think this is as close as you can do. After his jungle misadventures, John McAfee grew more and more paranoid. Since he couldn't fully trust his guards, he bought a shitload of dogs. Only he didn't do a great job of policing his dogs, and they had a tendency to run around the beach pissing off his expat neighbors. The angriest of these guys was a dude named Greg Fall. Now, Greg owned a sports bar in Orlando, and he lived in Belize for like half the year. Mm-hmm. It was his chill-out spot. He had a nice beach house. He did some construction in, in the country itself. And, you know, he, he, it was where he went to relax. And he I kinda, guess that's okay. It's whatever. Belize is like Ohio, like Ohio of the Caribbean. Well, let's not be that mean to Belize. I it's like it. trash. Oh, you are <laughs> being really hard on Belize for no reason. It's a very ugly, awful place. I do not agree. And mm. people of Belize, I, I'm defending you, and I think that your ginger wine is delightful. Look, people love Ohio, too. People love I don't the Bucks, love Ohio. But do you want to build a, a, a compound but there? Belize is pretty. I'd build is a it? compound in Belize. Is it? Yeah. Would you? Yeah. Eh, I mean, I'd prefer to build a compound in Guatemala because they got better mountains. But, like, Belize has some cool stuff. It's a nice place. They have cashew trees and bugs. You would just, I really hate, there's bugs everywhere. We come from Texas. You're talking about (laughs) bugs. There's mountains of crickets out there. Yeah, but crickets ain't doing nothing. Crickets give you a nice soundtrack to your life. You know what I mean? Some ASMR for your sleep. Like, they ain't biting the shit out of you. Guys, don't go. I was eating pizza in Guatemala with a friend once, and he like grabs the back of his neck and like pulls his hand away, and there's like a big weird looking caterpillar in it, and he like throws it down, and then suddenly his whole back bursts out and boils, like it's just like fucking wounds all over his back because oh. this thing had been crawling up him. And like the lady who ran the pizza joint was like, "Oh yeah, those those will do that. You don't want to get those on you." <laughs> So nonchalant. Yeah, they'll do that. Yeah, they'll do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to die in about 30 minutes, so you might want to. He was fine, but 
Ugh. And you said that was in Belize? That was in Guatemala, but it was in Guatemala (laughs) close to Belize. No, I know where you said it was. I was just trying to throw more shade on Belize. No, no, I'm not going to throw shade on Belize. This is a pro-Belize podcast. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an anti-McAfee podcast. (laughs) So this guy who vacations from Orlando. Yeah, this this dude, this like white expat dude who this is, he gets really angry at John for having a bunch of uncontrollable dogs, right? Right. Now- it's really hard to tell what happened. In the documentary Gringo, most of the people that Nanette Bernstein talks to seem to think that Greg Fall poisoned John McAfee's dogs. Mm. Other people have definitely suspected that. John McAfee himself says that he doesn't think Fall poisoned his dogs, that he doesn't think he would do that. But, but somebody poisoned the dogs. Well, I don't know. The dogs got sick and McAfee shot them all. And was apparently mm. furious about it because mm. they were sick. And if they were really poisoned, that's what you'd do to spare the dogs the pain. If it was right. a bad poison or something like that. I don't – I can't know. Greg Fall on November 12th, 2012 was found dead from a gunshot wound to the head in his house. And, of course, a lot of people suspected, oh, McAfee hired someone to kill Greg Fall because Greg poisoned his dogs. Okay. Really, I don't know what happened. I don't know if his dogs were poisoned. I don't know if John McAfee's just a goddamn lunatic and he thought his dogs were poisoned and he shot them. And that, they... that seems laggable. It's all possible. But Greg Fall wound up dead and John McAfee was considered the obvious suspect and is still the obvious suspect. Although, um, But no one did anything about it? I guess he was well, the law at this point. He no, showed up and decided he was the Things were done. Law. He was not the job in Ambergris K. This was like a, bi- a part of like... Belize that's like really well developed and oh, it's worse. so okay. like there's law there right? so he's not like, back in the jungle anymore. he's not back in the jungle anymore okay and even back in the jungle he got raided by the government <laughs> true shit true yeah. shit so John McAfee uh, like the police start coming after him to question him about this guy who gets murdered and everyone's saying it was probably John so he hid from the police first by burying himself in sand but what? Uh, yes he claims, how long was he trying to hide like a whole day <laughs> He claims he buried himself. He was like, all I need is a straw. (laughs) He used a box. I'll breathe air through that. (laughs) This guy is a fucking nut. He has millions of dollars. And the sand sand is your first choice, man? The sand is where you start. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Okay, John. No, never find me here. So the fallout from this sparked the drama that most people associate with John McAfee. He was a major story for several days as the Belizean government searched for him and he live blogged his evasion of authorities. So he live he live blogged himself hiding from the law as he, you know, Belize cops are searching for him and he's staying in safe houses and all this stuff, wearing disguises, which are always bad. Like, what's up, guys? It's your boy John. (laughs) No, he's he's typing, I guess, on a laptop. He does meet with journalists during this time and. Like one thing all the journalists are certain about is that like he's always in disguise and he always thinks the disguise is good and the disguise is always terrible. Like it's just a blonde wig on a guy who's clearly John McAfee. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like one this of them like wrote deluded. about like pretending to be tricked by the disguise because he didn't want like he fi- figured John wouldn't talk to him. If You're you, the like, reporter, so you got to come up and be like, oh, oh where's John McAfee? Where is John? <laughs> <laughs> so good at hiding. <laughs> oh, I got to talk to you. Oh, the wig. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> I never would have. Ge- I thought you were blonde, John McAfee. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so he, in these surprisingly regular updates that he posted on his blog while he was hiding out from the law. He got Wi-Fi. Like. Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> Belize is like a, a, a country and stuff. They well, yeah, Wi-Fi. but I'm like, so he's plugged in. So Belize was not really looking for him is what I'm uh, They gathering. don't have the kind of resources that we do. Like, they don't have a DNA testing lab or anything like that. Okay. Like, so I, I don't think, like, the Belize and law enforcement had the ability to, like, at that in 2012 to, like, be right. tapping the internet They couldn't even tap, like, his phone. Yeah. They might have been able to do that, but, like, it's pretty easy to get a burner phone in a place like true that. Shit. Very yeah, true. Yeah. Okay. Like He's just bucks. hiding out like Spongebob covering himself in sand. <laughs> <laughs> covering himself in sand. <laughs> live blogging. Okay, and great. Live blogging. Uh, he started claiming that the reason the Belizean government was after him was not the murder of Greg Fall, but the fact that he had hacked their government and uncovered evidence of some vague, massive corruption, possibly tied to the supposed giant drug ring that he believed was centered in Carmelita. So he frequently claimed to have tens of thousands of words and gigabytes of data, videos, and pictures and audio recordings, all proving this, you know, corruption in the government of Belize. But he failed to actually produce anything. Uh, On one blog post titled The Closing Trap, he wrote this. 
I have been asked why I don't release everything at once. This is the bane of the modern press. The mass of information, not just for my story, but for every story, is too great for an intelligent digestion in the time frame allotted to a journalist prior to the publisher's deadline. The press stories will describe what they always describe, a twisted shadow in an ill-lit room. I must control the flow so that the necessary glue of understanding has time to set. Yo, this is like listening to Trump speak, but if like Trump had a better like understanding of vocabulary yeah, and had words. Gone to school. And right. Stuff. It's yeah. still vague as fuck and I don't know what he said, but it sounded good at least. It sounds better. <laughs> Twisted shadow in a Right, than than you know? huge and very, very yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think Trump knows the word ill. Um <laughs> So McAfee uh, and his much shrunken entourage made their way into Guatemala, like snuck through Belize and made their way into Guatemala without alerting the authorities of either country. Having spent, again, considerable time in Guatemala, I can assure you that it is not hard to sneak into or out of the country. Okay. <laughs> is it even sneaking? <laughs> the like, border we guard. Walked in. <laughs> Sometimes you pay the border guard some cash yeah. or whatever. It's, they're, it's, they're... They didn't even ask for a lot, honestly. <laughs> it's, it's really, it's rough out there. Yeah. They're, they're having trouble. You help them out when you can. Right. They're like, what? <laughs> you have on you sometimes okay, you bribe the cops without him even asking just because you're like you know you look like you're having a rough day <laughs> you don't even have to you didn't even do any crimes which is like hey for later <laughs> for later uh, okay uh so john's story had people interested obviously and where there's a viral story of a mad millionaire fleeing justice there will be journalists a crew from vice managed to find john mcafee and spent four days filming his flight <laughs> Now, I'm sure that was hard. Yeah, they just look for the guy in the blonde <laughs> wig. Look for the guy in the blonde wig. Pretty easy. That's probably John McAfee. <laughs> now, this is fine from a journalistic point of view. Potentially, even the start of a really great story. It's certainly a documentary I would be interested in seeing. But someone at Vice made a spectacularly poor decision. Mm. On December third, two thousand twelve, they published an article titled "We Are with John McAfee Right Now, Suckers." What? Yeah. <laughs> The article included a photo of John McAfee next to an ins- extremely uncomfortable looking Vice editor. It conveyed very little information other than the fact that Vice had found McAfee and they felt the rest of the world were suckers. Weird flex, um, bro. Now, Vice soon learned why this is not the sort of thing journalists tend to do, because the person who uploaded the picture to that website failed to remove the geodata from the picture, oh, thus giving away the God. location of a man <laughs> fleeing from the law. <laughs> <laughs> they dropped a pin on my man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That ain't right. That mm-hmm. ain't right. I mean, he's a rapist, so fuck him. And- right, that's true, actually. So <laughs> and, good job, Vice. And fuck any journalist who would do that. Like, fine to want to hang out with like a criminal and try to like sneak across countries with him. That's right. a cool story. You don't post about it while you're doing it. Don't, See, that's the age of millennials. That yeah, was a millennial. We that fucked was that a shit up. Move. Like you were supposed to hold on to this information, compile an article, yeah. release it at a later date. They were like, Blow no, our minds. I want the likes. Yeah. When he gets into America, be like, and Vice was with him the whole time. And then right. boom, like, oh, that's really like, cool. Like, I can't wait that long. No, you guys <laughs> lost any cool cred by giving this him up to the cops. on Twitter like, God damn, with <laughs> with McAfee right now, so yeah. crazy. The Hashtag only thing murder worse, rate. The only thing worse than a narc is an accidental narc. Oh like, yeah. Yeah. It's just Come on, guys. They made it too easy. Someone yeah. just looked up the coordinates. They <laughs> yeah. might as well just took a picture next to something like really famous in yeah. Guatemala. <laughs> just dropped it. We're eating at this restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they've got like one of the pyramids of Tikal or something right. in the background. They tagged the restaurant. Yeah, yeah we left the Yelp review. <laughs> McAfee don't like the chicken here. Bad just place saying. to eat with John McAfee. <laughs> So he got arrested, of okay, course, of course, by the Guatemalan law enforcement. Well, shout out to them for paying attention to articles. I feel like it was one of those things where they're like, well, we have to arrest him now. Right. <laughs> like, I we... feel like they didn't even find it. Someone sent it to them yeah. like, hey, y'all do know he. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So McAfee was arrested, but because he was a rich guy, he was able to quickly hire a famous Guatemalan lawyer. Uh, There was a brief worry about him being extradited back to Belize, but he got around that by faking a heart attack, which basically kept him in the hospital long enough that his lawyer was able to work some magic and get him deported to America, safe and apparently immune from Belize and justice. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, you just got to fake a heart attack So he sometimes. found Guatemala Cochran and yeah. just got away with everything. And got away with everything. <laughs> Did have to fake a heart attack. How do you, I mean, what do you have to do? Grab your arm? Be like, just, Ouch. He, like, hurt himself. Ouch. He, like, collapsed and, like, hit his head and stuff. Like, he really put some work into it. Oh, he it. sold it, yeah. He sold it. He sold it. I'll give him credit. Okay. He didn't half-ass the fake he heart attack. He just gave us the life alert. He's old enough that if he just gave it us a, ooh, I've fallen down and I can't get up, you know, the lady who slides yeah, off the yeah, bed? Yeah. That's enough. That's enough. You're like 68. Like, right, we 
we believe it. Yeah. If a 68 year old grabs their chest at any point, I'm not going to yeah. question it. <laughs> Nobody assumes fake heart attack. Yeah, you don't have to get a concussion in the well, process. And again, look at the picture of John McAfee. John McAfee at 69 looked like he'd been eating nothing but crystal meth for 40 years. Yes. Like I would, yeah, I, would, I assume that heart's on its last any beat. Any medical <laughs> conditions, I'm like, yeah, this makes sense. Yeah, this that's... is plausible. But you know what McAfee did say earlier in our previous episode? He doesn't do anything half assed. So mm-hmm, if he mm-hmm. was going to fake a heart attack, Attack. Of course he's gonna get. So a he concussion. was gonna fake a heart attack. Cool. And if he was gonna rape somebody, he was gonna drug him. Oh God. That's the Man. dark side of it, you know. Why did he have to do that? I know it's it. That, that's ex- when I learned I was a fan of his. So we right. talked about how I got. I am not a libertarian, but he's a big libertarian figure, and I have some of those impulses. Like I'm a tall white guy who's been able to get away with a lot so I understand yeah. the impulse of wanting to not have rules and stuff and like <laughs> I just have enough but friends but you don't have rules already well yeah and I, I like I have enough friends who rely on you know Medicare or stuff like that to mm-hmm. know like oh no it's actually really good to have these things oh, and absolutely. you know it's, it's fine like but I enjoyed John McAfee's shtick it's right. always like I thought it was fun this millionaire nut job thing it was it was kooky until I could even I could even forgive if it was true that like this guy had poisoned his dogs. I could even forgive a murder for that. A murder for the poisoned dogs? I, That's where I got to slow down now. People over dogs. Well, yeah, people love dogs. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It, like if if the only bad people thing People over dogs, Sophie. People over dogs. People over dogs. I'm if not... I had to choose between you and your dog, wouldn't you want me to choose you? Don't ask Sophie that. Sophie question. might actually she's say no. She's shaking her head. Yeah. Yeah, she's saying no. She said, kill me and keep her dog alive. It's a great dog. It is a great dog. Well, I'm, I'm not saying it's okay to kill someone over a dog, but I'm saying that, like, if that was the only bad thing he'd done, if he, someone had poisoned his dogs and in, like, a heat of passion, he'd committed murder, <laughs> I could be like, that's not okay, but, like. A heat of passion. Well, you could, that could drive someone crazy. <laughs> that's true. That could, like, I could see someone not being a terrible person. Look, I was on his that. side after he low key murdered his own nephew. <laughs> so you, you were down with the murder of his <laughs> I was like, nephew. I was like, I mean, you know, sometimes so, nephews are casualty of a scam, you know. Yeah. But yeah, when he assaulted the woman, I had to hop off the ship. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, he's it, a trash human. Yeah, rape so, is my line too. <laughs> but he escaped. <laughs> yeah. He escaped. Yeah, he all escaped. This. And uh, we will talk about what happens next because there is so much more that happens next than there should be, Lacey. <sighs> It's heartbreaking. <laughs> but you know what's not heartbreaking? What? The wonderful products, services, and or uh, objects that advertise. Buy! Buy! We're back! We just did some ads for some products, and John McAfee just faked a heart attack to escape Guatemala. So, now we're back. We're talking about John McAfee. Now, after you know he made his way back into the United States, we all laughed at Vice for their their big fuck up, and then the world just sort of forgot about John McAfee for a little while. Um, this did not go over well with John McAfee because, as you may have started to know, he kind of likes publicity. Yeah, I think he likes attention. When you go on a run from the authorities and you yeah. live blog, when you live blog, you're like this is great content. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this this will be some good content. Them trying to catch me for this murder. <laughs> right. <laughs> What? Yeah. So you would think he would want to fade into anonymity. Nah. Yeah, yeah. So John McAfee, in order to, uh, you know, get himself back into the uh, spotlight a little bit, like two or three months after this guy gets murdered and he's accused of the murder, Greg Fall, you know, is been dead for like three months. John McAfee releases a viral YouTube video. Oh my God. Uh, How to uninstall McAfee antivirus featuring John McAfee does have a fun premise. It starts with him in a smoking jacket and like a fake background with a bunch of books behind him. And he's like talking about how bad McAfee antivirus is since he sold out his, because he didn't have any interest in it. Right. And it is a shitty product. So this is like how Kevin Spacey wanted his YouTube video to go over. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and it's it, he's wearing like a smoking jacket, like young women come in and like fondle him at different points and like oh, kiss him and stuff. God, okay. At one point he lights a cigarette with a hundred dollar bill and then he cuts to a stereotypically nerdy looking guy who he says will explain how to delete the software and the rest of the video cuts between that guy trying to delete the software and John McAfee now half naked wearing a gun surrounded by women and big comical boxes with like bath salts like cereal boxes with bath salts written on the front and he's just railing bath salts through a silly straw and every time what? the video cuts to like that 
that nerdy guy, and then back to McAfee, there's more guns and more drugs on the table and more women around him. So they're really enhancing this bit. It's the, They're definitely playing to a bit. I'm going to play you a little selection of it so you can get an idea of the tenor of this video. John? Huh? Yes. Uh, does that sound about right? Well, not completely, you know. I mean, it's always there. It's watching. It's been watching me for years. Every time I turn on the fucking computer, it's there looking at me. You know, something went wrong. 15 years ago, I had some beautiful software and they took it over. I don't know what they did. It was like the time I hired that Bangkok prostitute to do my taxes while I fucked my accountant. It was terrible. The same fucking thing is going on now. But I know what to do. I know exactly what to do. Believe me, I've got a fucking solution right here. So. Okay. The the graphics in this leave much to be desired. It was desired. like 2013. Okay. But yeah, you know, uh, you know. A lot of diversity in this video. A quite of- a few black women. I guess that's from Living in Belize. Well, we'll be getting to that in a little bit, Lacey. <laughs> okay. That is one of the many problematic things <laughs> oh, about... God. Yeah, yeah. But you can see how someone could just watch that video and be like, ah, John McAfee, he's, he's, a, he's a card. Right. He's Wacky still guy. definitely on drugs in that video. His whole body is red. His whole body's always His red. Lobster red. <laughs> lobster red. And he's talking in a cadence that ain't Yeah. 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 Now, uh nine million people have viewed that video so far. It did very well. A lot of websites talked about it. Uh you know, watching casually back then, I assumed John McAfee was a fellow who had a sense of humor about himself. Right. Like I know what you guys think. I'm I know what you guys think. I'm it. doing all the best. Ha 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 ha. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The attention gradually faded, though, uh, which prompted McAfee to launch several new schemes in 2016. Now, unfortunately for John McAfee, unfortunately for truth, that same year, Showtime and director Nanette Bernstein released Gringo, The Dangerous Life of John McAfee. The documentary was packed with shocking allegations. In addition to Dr. Adonisio's rape allegations, it also alleged that members of McAfee's, in essence, gang had beat a Belizean man to death uh, or beat him so badly that he later died in the hospital. Mm. And the way it comes across in the documentary is that McAfee became convinced this guy was trying to kill him, but he was just some random dude. And McAfee was like a paranoid nut job. And anyway... So there's an additional murder. So now there's Greg Falls' murder, which the documentary pins on a guy who was kind of part of McAfee's entourage that he probably paid to kill him. We don't really know. But everything in, like, I would say it's plausible. It seems really plausible to me based on what I've seen in the documentary and the evidence presented that he's involved in two murders in addition to the rape. So now the documentary comes out, and, of course, John McAfee can't let that thing just uh, just – lie. You no, know? of course not. Of course not. I'm sure he appreciated the attention, though. Well, he responded to the uh, documentary alleging that he'd murdered two people and raped a woman the same way he responded to everything else, oh, by God. being a goddamn maniac. He shot out a rapid-fire series of tweets, including a picture of a Belizean newspaper with an article titled, Money for Lies! And, of course, pictures of John McAfee and several sources of the documentary. John also posted video interviews with some of his Belizean girlfriends, essentially mm-hmm. making the same claims about the Showtime documentary. These girls had been on the documentary, and then suddenly they were showing up on YouTube video claiming that they'd been fed answers and stuff like that. Uh, He put up a Medium post where he laid out the case against the network and Nanette Bernstein. That Medium article included a video where several young Belizean men basically declared Dr. Adonisio a fraud and a loose woman and said that, of course, why would she rape? She was fucking everybody. Mm. That, it's really gross. Later reporting by Bernstein had several of these people who filmed, you know, the people that McAfee had had film videos for him, basically tell her, like, look, we did it because he paid us 1,200 bucks and we're dirt poor. It's Belize. We don't have much money. We needed the cash. I can't say this for certain. It is impossible for me to know, but I'm going to play an excerpt from one of these videos, and it really does seem like something somebody would do for 1,200 bucks. Right. So. Allison, yes, I met her, man. Uh, By the way, my name is Felix, you know. Um, Allison, you know, you were talking bad about John, you know, that he raped you. But um, if you're talking about rape, come on. I should be the one that... Could have accused you, you know, because I was 17 years old. Do you remember that? Well, you know, I was working here in the property as well from the beginning, so I was always around, you know. So Allison used to stay in um in our village, you know. So I lived very close to her, next to my aunt. So she invited me over, and you know, we had talks. We, you know, we used to go to club drink and stuff like that i'm for sure man we had a lot of sex and stuff like that there's several of those they're all like that can i just say that this man is in gas station sunglasses (laughs) 
<laughs> and I've never seen somebody's neck move more in my life. If you want to just talk about <laughs> physical, physical attributes of a liar. Yeah. This man straight up, if y'all could see this video, imagine Stevie Wonder <laughs> in gas station knockoff Oakleys. Oh just a bobbing and a weaving, telling us this story. Yeah, he definitely got paid, for sure. You can see this video and all of the sources for this episode on our website, BehindTheBastards.com. If you want to watch a man lie to discredit a rape survivor for twelve hundred dollars listen that was a that was a ted talk and just lies <laughs> yes. if I, please go watch that video because if anybody ever communicates with you like that in your life <laughs> they're not telling you the they truth are definitely not telling you the truth now mcafee's medium post also alleged that bernstein and showtime paid sources for their interviews which would be a breach of journalistic ethics as proof he included a western union receipt for thirty five hundred dollars from nanette bernstein to one of the subjects of the documentary Mm -hmm. now nanette claims that this money that was paid was in exchange for licensing pictures and video taken by these sources and Mm -hmm. the documentary has a ton of that it's filled with pictures that these people who were hanging out with john and were sources in the documentary took of them and videos they took because she wasn't able to tape John McAfee. Sure. And considering how much of that she used, yeah, I could totally see her paying well over $3,500 for that kind of stuff. Like, having filmed documentaries in places like this, I don't, didn't pay people for their interviews, but I definitely paid people for access to footage. You know, right. it's what you do out there. And you, sometimes you pay them thousands of dollars. Yeah, it's and it is to get kind some of footage. sticky because it is you're paying for the footage, but <clears throat> there definitely are implications that could lead people to believe yeah. that you're also kicking in for their story. It's not the black and whitest area of journalism, no. but it's not inherently shady that she would have paid these people. But what's crazy is, is that people love to b- believe abusers and liars like this when it's like, come on now. If you saw a dude that looked like John McAfee on the motherfucking street <laughs> and somebody told you that that he was a rapist, and let's say he was having a party tonight, and yeah. he was like, hey, trying to give you a flyer. Somebody was like, God, that guy's a rapist. That you would be like, oh, okay, I'm not going to go to that party. Like, you would immediately <laughs> not go to that party. I feel like giant full arm and shoulder length tribal tattoos are like being in the sex offender registry. Like, it right. says the same thing to me. Like, okay. <laughs> also, just like he was a, a walking advertisement for methamphetamines. <laughs> Like, please stop acting like y'all didn't watch those truth commercials in the 90s where people were melting into couches and shit. It was always a dude who looked just like McAfee on there picking at his damn face. Like, he is the after photo of crack. No. I believe everybody. The after photo of something. So... Uh, in that Medium post, uh, McAfee mentioned suing Showtime for defamation. As of this moment, no lawsuit has been launched. There is some evidence that after decades of buying expensive homes and equally expensive lawsuits, uh, as well as however much money it costs to flee justice in Belize and hire Guatemala's best criminal defense attorney. It's got to be mildly expensive. Yeah, John McAfee was running low on cash at this Ooh, point. Okay. There's a little bit of evidence of that. So despite having claimed that he was done with the business world back in uh, like 1999, he signed a deal with MGT, a cybersecurity company to become its CEO. Shares rose. CEO? I think so, yeah. Shares rose 1,200% with this announcement. Now, as part of the deal, MGT agreed to buy McAfee's Devasive app, an anti-spyware program that someone had developed and that he was sticking his name on because he had some brand recognition. So, for a while, this seemed like a potential gold mine until the SEC subpoenaed them and sent stocks tumbling back down again. Um, he was snorting... Fake bath salts. Fake bath salts. CEO. 1,200% raise in shares. Oh, my God. Even after the shares fell because the SEC subpoenaed them, it was still up like 500% just because it had McAfee's name attached. Wow. Yeah, it's frustrating. But no amount of legal, financial, or business trouble was going to stop John McAfee from hitting that last square on the white guy bingo card yes. and running for president. Oh, <laughs> of the United States. See, at the time, I thought you meant Belize. No, of the United <laughs> Good States. Good Lord. And if he had ran at the right time, he probably would be president right now well, because this did, is a smarter Trump. He did run in the same election Trump ran in. So, yeah. He started giving lurid interviews to YouTube channels with names like Liberty Pen and other libertarian. He ran as a libertarian. Oh, that's so why he, he didn't win. Yeah, he ran if as a libertarian. If he ran as a racist, I mean a Republican. <laughs> oh, I mean. <laughs> what was I saying? He might have won. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I mean, you're probably right. If he just thrown in some like, that's the thing about McAfee is all of his racism has been of the consuming like, people's culture. Yeah, diet type. racism. He's a culture vulture. Yeah, he's, he's a culture a, vulture. Yeah, but he's not a build the wall kind of guy. No, 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 yeah. no. no. Although maybe he'll turn into that in the next two or three years. It's Listen, where the grifters the man are going. Has transformed. <laughs> <The> man. <laughs> so the videos for John McAfee's presidential campaign were distinctly less fun than his wacky McAfee uninstalls McAfee viral hit. That video had been pretty clearly tongue in cheek. You know, the guns and the drugs are all joking, right? Like it's it's kind of yeah. silly. They just keep are piling funny mo- gu- because they're true. Yeah, but it's funny because, like, he's making fun of this image that he had. Sure, yeah, he was definitely poking fun at the image. Yeah. The campaign videos, in these videos, the character is gone. It's not funny anymore. He's not doing bath sauce no more? I think he is, but he's not joking about it anymore. Ah. And he's not joking about the guns either. The videos portray just a heavily armed and clearly unhinged man. So I'm going to play you a selection from that video, but I really recommend you at home watch it. Again, John McAfee in this does not come across as wacky or madcap. He seems ill, like very ill. Like our current president. Yeah. (laughs) In chaos, power is powerless. Power only works when there is a structure through which power can flow. The boss, the second in command, the third in command, the fourth in command, the peon. When that breaks down and the peon no longer is listening, and the peon goes, I'm mad as hell and I'm not taking this shit anymore, then chaos reigns. So the whole video is like that. He he spends a lot of time talking about how the Sinaloa cartel is coming to kill him. He's always got a gun in his hand. There's tons of shots of him just walking around on his porch with a rifle. Like his security guard is like, it, it's he he seems unhinged, right? You saw it, like Absolutely. he's just always got a gun. Like, but at, in this day and age, though, I'm like I could still see him being a viable candidate. Yeah, yeah, president. no, I'm not saying he wouldn't be viable. I'm saying he seems ill in that. Oh. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, what was he even talking about? The peon? Who yeah. is the peon? It's just. Is nuts. that you? Is that me? Why are you loading guns in this video? <laughs> Why are you loading guns <laughs> in your presidential campaign Who video? Who are you about to shoot <laughs> in this presidential campaign video? The Sinaloa cartel. His belief has evolved from like this town is a center of drug trafficking to the Belizean government and the Sinaloa cartel are after him. So now in that video, he talks a lot about how, like, yeah, the cartel's coming to murder him and his family. So why would we want you to be president? Why would we want you? (laughs) That seems like we have to start really invested in more security and, like, you are a wanted man. Also, he's smoking copious amounts of cigarettes in this video. What are we supposed to take from this? (laughs) It's really weird. He also drinks um, increasingly in the things you've seen. He's been claiming he's been sober and hasn't drunk. Right. At this point on, he's never not drinking. Whenever journalists around him, whenever he's in a video, he's always drinking huge amounts of alcohol. And he gains about 40 pounds from 2016 up to present day. And I think right. it's mostly from the liquor. He looks kind of healthy, though. He looks kind of healthy there. This is the start. Okay. This is the start. Okay. Because I was about to say, he was pretty cracked out. So 40 pounds actually would look nice on his frame. Yeah. Now, there's a woman in that video named Janice Dyson. Uh, now, in s- December of 2012, when John McAfee first returned to the U.S. from Central America, he met Janice outside of a cafe in Florida. She offered him a blowjob. He said no, but okay. he paid her to cuddle, uh, at least according to him. They wound up striking up a relationship. This apparently angered her pimp, a guy named Crutchfield, who she and McAfee claim wanted her to give him info on where McAfee was staying so he could kidnap McAfee or something. It's Crutchfield. Kind of, Crutchfield's the name of the pimp. That sounds like a pimp. Name that sa- right that does sound like a, a pimp. Very, name. But like a low budget pimp. Like I don't Crutchfield think this... doesn't have any crush velvet. He doesn't own any gator shoes. I don't think any of the nice. He met her outside of a cafe. Like, Yeah, he's like operating out of like a 96 talking... Nissan. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? This ain't a good pimp. We're okay. not talking about like Bellagio level. Right, or right. This ain't Bishop <laughs> Don Juan. Yeah. Crutchfield is a very low budget pimp. Yeah. They probably not even accepting Venmo or like app payments. Like They either don't accept Venmo or only take Venmo. <laughs> he's probably still bartering. Like, yeah, we'll do sex acts for, for canned goods. No, it's not this good. This being John McAfee, they might take Bitcoin. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, God. Oh, so Crutchfield wanted the location. He wanted, wanted the, the location okay. so he can kidnap John McAfee. Janice apparently claims that she like stopped talking to her pimp at this point, and she and John start dating, and they got Good married for her. in 2013. Good so for like her. a few months after meeting him, they get married. Uh, but they seem to have had an instantly kind of difficult relationship. Okay, um, not surprising. So later in 2013, she leaves their home in Portland after a fight and calls Crutchfield. Uh, she he, called her pimp. I, I don't. I don't know what her he life's been like. He must really be low on funds. He must be low on funds, or maybe they had a good relationship. I don't know. No, I, I mean I like uh, McAfee must be low on funds because I feel like once you leave your pimp, you don't go back to pimping. Well, if you leave your rich husband, maybe. Ooh, that's, I, that's a spiral I, right there. She might, she might have been going to him for emotional support. I don't okay, know. Okay, I, maybe I don't emotional know. support. Maybe. Okay. But he told her people were after McAfee, uh, and he she claims that you know she reconciled with John after this, but Crutchfield started blackmailing her and making her leave the doors of their home unlocked and trying Ooh. to get her to drug his food so he'd be easy to kidnap. <laughs> now. Very possible these are all lies on her part, because I do think that John McAfee may have married another scammer. Here. Oh, for sure. He liked but, scammers. I will say this. The the journal, or the doctor who went to play guitar and then <laughs> met him in a bar and then started working in a compound, that sounds like some scammer shit to me. Like, she was also a scammer, for sure. Well, we'll get into what she might have been doing. His Not that nephew it justifies was a scammer. anything bad happening. No, no, no. Nothing justifies what he did to her, but I just also want to say that she was definitely a scammer. His nephew was a scammer. <laughs> Or little <laughs> nep nep little nep nep tism. He was definitely nep, a scammer. Nep nep tism. I nep like nep tism. Yeah. Um, he was definitely a scammer. So I wouldn't be surprised. No, like... it's like planetary bodies. These people orbit around each other. For sure. You know? That's just the way it works. But what orbits around this podcast are the fine sponsors and advertisers that support this show. We're back. We're talking about John McAfee, who has just married a young lady named Janice, uh, who claims that after a fight, she wound up being blackmailed by her pimp to help him kidnap John McAfee, probably on behalf of some cartel or something. It's really hard to say what happened here and what the truth is. This is what Janice claims. This is what McAfee claims. There were several interviews with him published after the 2016 election. And, you know, this was all while he'd moved to Tennessee by this point and bought a small compound in Tennessee this time. Um, So it's really hard to say what happens. But this is what he starts telling journalists around this time. that His his wife tried to have him murdered or tried to have him kidnapped or something. And, yeah, it's... it's, Makes sense. She did contact the pimp again, so... Maybe. Maybe. So anyway, what we do, what we know for sure is that after the 2016 election, interviews with John McAfee at his compound in Tennessee show him like really degenerating. For one thing, he's drinking constantly, even mm-hmm. though he was still claiming to be sober at that point. For another, his security detail expanded from the one guy you see in that video to like a basketball team worth of muscular, heavily armed men. Like he posed with them regularly. Like, He'd love to photo shoot. Yeah, he's always like, naked, always wearing a gun, and always surrounded by big guys with guns. Like, this. McAfee gives me, like, rapper vibes. Like, I'm getting a lot of Chief Keef, like, a yeah. lot of, like, just posing with guns. Yeah, you know what I mean? he really likes that. He really likes Not that. shooting anyone, just having a, like, who's taking the photo shoots? Like, all right, could you smile less? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we yeah. get the gun more in no, frame? No, you gotta look tougher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Little tougher. Okay, yeah, just flex your arm. Make Great. sure the guy with a really big bicep yeah. is corner right. Can we get yeah. him in front so we can see the bicep? <laughs> yeah. Lovely. We really need that bicep. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, and just cheat the gun a little to the left. Great, (laughs) great. That's great, McAfee. That's great. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, in September of 2017, all of John McAfee's paranoia excised itself in a heavily armed rampage by John McAfee against his own home. Here's Newsweek. Quote, September 4th, Alex Handrick, one of his guards, woke up in his basement bedroom to the sound of gunfire. Having served in the Army for eight years, the private security guard recognized the noise immediately. Realizing the shots were coming from the rooms above him, Handrick, 28, grabbed his assault rifle and rushed upstairs. There, naked but for an ammunition belt, was 71-year-old tech tycoon and former fugitive John McAfee, spraying bullets into the wall and ceiling of the living room. Seeing Handrick, he stopped firing. There's an intruder, he said. Janice McAfee, 34, John's wife of nearly five years, recalled that the couple were having sex at their home in Lexington, Tennessee that night when they were interrupted by their dogs barking. He thought he heard movement in the crawl space under a bedroom in the attic and then fired his gun into both areas, she later said in a statement to the FBI obtained by Newsweek. So. 71. 71. Engaged in coitus. 
and found by his bodyguard naked with a bandolier of ammo firing into which I want to be 71 and nakedly shooting up my own home. That sounds like a great that, time. Right. This man has impeccable health. Yeah, he's 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 very robust. Talk about <laughs> somebody who put their body through the ringer and that shit is holding up. Yeah, yeah. Should we all be doing bath salts? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Are bath salts the key to health? You need bath salts, guns, and dogs. Okay. And that's apparently the key to health. Sophie, you look, I really can't tell what emotion you're expressing right now. You have a gun, so you're already a third of the way there. Yeah. I mean, a dog, so you're already a third <laughs> of the way there. You have a dog, Sophie, not a gun. Just that he has more dogs. Yeah, he has a lot of dogs. He has a lot of dogs. Oh, that after he murdered dogs, he has more dogs. Yeah. Yeah, he keeps getting more dogs. Poor dogs. He seems to be a dog lover. Now, after this armed rampage, Janice claims she told McAfee that his wild paranoia was justified because she'd been informing on him to her former pimp. So this is when she tells John that she's been informing on him to her pimp. And okay, to drug so him she's and like validating his like delusion a little bit. It might be that. It, it might be a scam. It might be that he was just so angry that she felt like she had to tell him something right. so that he would calm down. Like... It's really hard to tell what happened, okay. but something nuts is happening. Yeah, when you're talking to a senile man with an assault rifle Who is, on bath salts. Again, at the time she's telling him this, he is naked with a gun in his hand, yeah. having just damaged their eardrums permanently by firing an assault rifle inside. <laughs> like, yeah, well, John, take but, it outside. Okay, you know what? I'm the guy. I was trying to kill you, but now we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, if we look at history, that probably worked for him since his last girlfriend definitely tried to shoot him in the head and he was like, all right, well, you sleeping in the guest house now. Yeah, yeah, maybe she just wanted a guest house. <laughs> Listen, you try to shoot at John, uh, you get a house. So after this whole misadventure, John McAfee told Newsweek, quote, it's a complicated morass of a spider's web. I am the fly and the spider has more than eight legs. This is more or less the tenor of everything John McAfee has said uh, since 2016. It's very poetic. Yeah. So because his security detail could find no signs of forced entry, McAfee started living under the assumption that some of them, too, were in on the giant conspiracy against him. Oddly enough, John stayed with Janice, the wife who just admitted to helping drug kingpins haunt him. Quote, it's been one plot after another. My wife was in full cooperation with them, but at the same time trying to urge me not to do things that would lead me directly into the trap without telling me that she was cooperating to collect me. Janice has probably done more good than harm because while she was cooperating, she at the same time kind of likes me, I guess. He told Newsweek that he had no plans of leaving his wife and that they are still together today. He told them he loved her. She was not willing to say that she loved him, but she did tell Newsweek that she admired her husband. So there's that. <laughs> Like, I don't really know. You won't even lie to a news source about loving someone. <laughs> that means you hate them. Because I would, listen, if I'm with the man and you know he paying these bills and yeah. I ain't got to go back down to fuck with a, what was his name? What was it? <laughs> Crutchfield. <laughs> Fucking crotchety ass <laughs> pimp named Crutchfield. <laughs> Crutchfield, you know you work in long days. Mm -hmm. Like, hell no. Like, I at least say I love him on TV. She yeah, at least bring to herself. Newsweek. Right. Like, not even real she journalists. Like, yeah, I, <laughs> like, yeah we, you know, he, he cool. Sorry, Newsweek. That was mean for no reason. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I feel like maybe you deserve it, Newsweek. Let me do some research. Uh, uh, yikes. Yeah. Quote from Newsweek. In an email to Newsweek on November 12th, McAfee wrote, I eat, sleep, and shower with a pistol in my hand. When I enter the main house from my bedroom, secured with a 10-gauge solid steel door, my two German shepherds and one pit bull precede me. Moments before I emerge, I call my head of security and request that my detail all be sitting in reclining chairs with their feet up, a vulnerable position since I am standing and armed. It is not a fun situation. So John McAfee's crazy right now. Oh, yeah, for sure. What? All his... Dogs, he and he's the deserve them. <laughs> so mad. And he's pretty neurotic too. Like to think yeah. that you're like, dude, really? You made an antivirus software program. Like you're not El Chapo. Dude, like you don't have anything anybody calm wants. Down. Calm down, John. Like nobody's looking for you. Nobody <laughs> cares. <laughs> The year after that batshit Newsweek article was published, Men's Journal sent a writer to John McAfee's compound, where it became clear the situation had deteriorated even further. McAfee spent his days darting around his compound looking for partly eaten packets of cream cheese, which he said were evidence of cartel hitmen. <sighs> yep. At one point, he picked up a random rock and insisted that it had been brought over from Mexico to help the hitmen with their homesickness. Uh, the a journalist rock. then noted that, like, because oh, okay. McAfee was like, they don't have rocks like this in America. And the guy was like, there was a pile of rocks nearby that looked just like it. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> he's just he's, he's yo he really lost it these aren't even signals i mean at least if there was like an avocado around you could be like yeah the cartel left this avocado but a rock and some cream cheese well it's hard to sell because number one we one thing we know about john mcafee what's his favorite pastime lying to journalists yes that is true so this could all be an act right but it also really seems like a lot of this might just be that he's gone off the deep end yeah and he's bought into his own bullshit and he's legitimately crazy now i really don't know um, the article did make it very clear, the Men's Journal article made it very clear that John McAfee, who had been claiming to be sober for years, was now drinking heavily all day, every day, even pounding vodka in the TSA line at the airport, which I've done. I'm not going to, I'm not too proud. I mean, who I've gotten wasted it? in the TSA you line. You can't take it with you. <laughs> you can't take it with you. They will take it away. So you pour it into a coffee thermos and you make <laughs> sure that you're just sober enough to walk through that line. And then whatever happens in the airport after that is fine. Right. Yeah. But look, they have so many bars in the airport. That's why they tell you to get there early. It's a scam. You don't need to get there early for TSA. You got to get there early so you can sit around in the airport bar and drink. I mean, that's why I get to the airport early. I- Airport is like international laws. Like yeah. it's five o'clock all the time at the it's, airport. It's can, always five <laughs> o'clock and nobody's got a problem if you're drinking. Oh, hell airport. no. You can drink at 10 a.m. and people are like, yeah. you're a traveler. You're at an airport. Front way. It's, yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Oh, I love airports. Now, the writer of that Men's Journal article followed John McAfee and his entourage to speak at a technology conference. During that time, the writer had a moment with McAfee's bodyguard, an older gentleman named Poole. And I'm going to read that quote because it really gives you some incredible color on the kind of people John McAfee has surrounded himself named with Named Poole. Now. His name That's was his last Poole. name. Yeah. Okay, last name. Quote, I sit with Poole, a balding, white-haired man with a penchant for endless southern fried chatter and a devout belief in his boss. He doesn't go anywhere without me, says Poole, blowing on his coffee. He won't say exactly what he did before working with McAfee, but it involved a connected family in Chicago. I know there are bad guys out to get him, and it's not going to happen on my watch. I don't need sleep. I can watch all day and night. Poole makes a face and excuses himself. A few minutes later, he returns, holding a napkin to his bleeding mouth. I ask him what happened. I had a tooth that was bothering me, so I went outside and asked a construction worker if I could borrow a wrench. He shows me an off-color fang that was in his mouth ten minutes ago. Poole tosses it into the trash. He flashes a gap-toothed smile. Now I can enjoy my coffee. What? Okay, okay, first of all, McAfee, you can't get your, your entourage no dental? Like, they can't get dental. I guess they can't go to the dentist if they watch it day and night. Yeah, exactly. Don't need sleep. He's got to do his own dentist work. You know, I'm going to call this guy an Andy King. That's what I'm calling all people who are just this devout. Andy King was that dude who said he was going to suck dick for every y'all water in the Fire Festival documentary. And now, <laughs> if anybody is that dedicated, but I might have to change it to pull. He took, his, be a tooth pool. He took out. his tooth out to impress a guy from Men's Journal, oh which it's a good God. article. Good, good writing, good journalism, but... And also, Weird flex, bro. <laughs> your teeth are falling out, fam. Because if you could take, I don't care if you had a construction tool, if you could take your own tooth out, that joint was loose. Yeah, probably. Like you're an old man. Who are you going to fight? I don't. I mean, it, with a gun, you can be old and dangerous. Yeah, I guess. But people can disarm people with guns. Look yeah. at Liam Neeson. <laughs> Look at Liam Neeson. Who's <laughs> also old. He neck chopped everybody. I bet he pulls his own teeth out. <laughs> So, this poor guy. Oh. Just just to pull back for a minute. In the 15 years or so since the Sky Gypsies were a thing, oh. John McAfee has gone from an extreme sports guru partying with a bunch of rich adventure junkies to a very sick, very paranoid maniac hanging out with a constellation of mentally ill people and opportunists, yeah. suckling off his apparently limitless cash reserves and enabling his paranoia. Now, I spent a lot of my time when I was working on this article trying to figure out what exactly had driven John to such a place of madness. I got one possible answer near the end of my research after a helpful fan on Twitter pointed me to an article published by Jeff Wise in New York Magazine in 2016, the obscure legal drug that fuels John McAfee. So, you remember when uh, they found those crystals, Mm -hmm. that crystalline chemical in his jungle fortress? We're about to learn what it probably was. Quote, from that article. A former member of his inner circle forwarded me a photo of a packaging label that one of McAfee's friends took in the course of a four-day binge earlier in this month in New York City. Now, the binge was in New York, but this is while John was living in Tennessee, not all that long before he started shooting up his own house and wandering around the grounds looking for cream cheese packets. Okay. Quote, the label from a package delivered from a Chinese chemical company suggests why McAfee never called the drug by name. The moniker 1-phenyl-2-1-pyrodinyl-1-hexenone hardly rolls trippingly off the tongue. The chemical compound has no street name, although among organic chemists, it goes by the slightly catchier handle of alpha-PHP. Now, 
Alpha PHP is a dopamine uptake reinhibitor. Uh, it basically makes you happy, deliriously, excitedly happy, like your brain normally releases dopamine during yeah. good times. And then it sucks it back up into the synapses because, you know, you don't want to have too much going on there. Yeah. A drug like this stops your brain from sucking it back up. It's kind of the same thing that ecstasy does with serotonin. So uh, it's a, a, a powerful, happy drug. Um, but it has downsides too. Uh, oh, you now, don't say. There's a fantastic website uh, that if you're if you're looking at experimenting with drugs the way I did when I was 19, 20, 21, 22, 20. If you're looking at experimenting with drugs, <laughs> you got to check out Arrowid. It's a fantastic website. It, it collects Wait, what'd you say? Arrowid. Arrowid. E R O W I D. Okay, because it sounded like you said heroin for no, a second. No, I was like, <laughs> you, I feel like that's if not... you're getting into drugs, you got to start with heroin. <laughs> heroin. That's where you start. Yeah. No, no, don't start there. Don't ever go there. Uh, okay, arrowid, arrowid, guys. So if you're like into like I did, you know, I've done I've done like my ecstasy and my LSD and stuff, but I also did a bunch of weird shit that like. 2CT7, 5MEOMIPT, uh, 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 which not DXM, that's a common one, but like uh, MDPV. I've done like weird. If you want, if you're gonna do weird stuff like that, if you're gonna do like you the Shogun like chemicals bands. and stuff, yeah, <laughs> no. they do sound like noise bands. A lot of noise bands yeah. are, are named after drugs. <laughs> if you're gonna do that stuff, you got to go to Arrowit because. It collects stories of other drug users, a lot of whom are also mm. chemists who have made this stuff. And so it'll be like the best health information available. Ah. But it also includes reports from people who have done this stuff. And so on this website, looking up Alpha PHP, I found a particularly evocative review that I think will help us understand what was going on in John McAfee's head as he takes this stuff. I want to know. <laughs> now, the review is titled, From Psychonaut to Junkie in Two Weeks. So it's not a happy story. Okay. Quote, I felt the rush build up in five minutes, and for the next 20 minutes, I felt the most intense euphoria I have ever known. This felt miles more euphoric than cocaine. Surprisingly, it even felt better than meth. It felt too good, and 20 minutes later, I felt the most heart-pounding anxiety attack. I realized my stimulant tolerance was at zero. 40 milligram as a start dose was too much. I calmed myself down and walked around my entire house trying to ease my mind. After one hour of the initial dose, I took another 35 to 40 milligram line, what? and the euphoria struck me again. It didn't wind down, down like it would with cocaine. The second line never Never feels as good as the first with cocaine, but with this, it pretty much brought the euphoria back. So this guy describes it as like better, more addictive cocaine, and we know John McAfee has a Lexus fucking problem cocaine. with cocaine, right? And I can see John having a similar first experience because this guy had a low tolerance when he first started. John's right. been sober for years, and not he's doing older. drugs, and he's this older. This is normally when the Rick James thing happens. Exactly, to you. I can see this hitting him hard, and I yeah. can see him falling hard in love with it. And the best thing about it, of course, would be that it's legal. There's something called the Analog Act. So if a drug that's not explicitly illegal by name is too similar to another drug that is illegal, that drug is also illegal. But there's a lot of drugs out there that are really powerful psychedelics. You trip for like fucking 16 hours, but there's no law against them because it's just something some somebody tweaked a couple of chemicals and now like this new psychedelic exists. And like, let's, so what I was doing, I was a teenager. We would buy this shit like 1920. We'd buy this shit from like Canadian pharmaceutical sites and you would just experiment with stuff nobody's done. And you're like, you've got some weird chemical that you're like, hope this doesn't kill me. <laughs> like, But the other thing you're hoping is that you don't run into what John ran into, which is like for everybody out there, there's one drug that will be your downfall. Like it's for some people, it's alcohol. For some people, it's meth. For some people, it's pills. Everybody's got a substance that if you were to try it, you'd realize it fills some hole in your head so well that like it's instantly a problem for you. Like that's that's something anyone who experiments with a lot of substances that's always in the back of your head. It's right. So you're I kind of playing about. Russian roulette with addiction. You're very much playing Russian roulette when you start messing around with this stuff. And I think John McAfee hit a loaded cylinder. Like that that's exactly what happened. Is he started playing around with some chemicals and he found one that hit his neurotransmitters just right. Yeah. It just filled the hole in his brain. This that is also a rich ass to. drug because it's like you can't go out and get this shit. You can't walk down the street or go to you know what I mean? That's possibly true. I'm gonna bet it's actually way cheaper than Coke because you think it's like not dark illegal. web, like you just it doesn't order have to be dark, it's legal. So you you could just you could be I mean so I can go to Walgreens and get this shit. No, but if you're you could you're ordering it from like China or wherever, oh, okay. but you can order it by the pound, and it's probably not crazy expensive. Oh, like by if the it's not pound. if it's not illegal, if they're just shipping it to your then door, there's no demand. Why, yeah, why would it why would it be expensive? Right, like yeah, as long as it's someone's making it, it can be pretty reasonable to buy. I, I haven't looked into what Alpha PHP costs, right? But I'm gonna guess it's cheaper than Good Blow. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. Um, 
But but it also makes sense though because if this is something that's specifically made, um, and it's not made to sell for cheaper, like why blow is expensive is because most of it's cut with shit. It's so you're paying yeah. to not snort baby laxative or yeah, whatever exactly. the fuck else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So, a lot of John's behavior since 2010 makes more sense if you realize he's been pounding better cocaine into his brain and increasing yeah. doses the entire time. And his what he was doing with Allison in that lab makes more sense if you think, oh, maybe this was how John wanted to fund his medical research is by selling alpha PHP because it's legal. And again, he didn't get busted when the government found it. Nothing right, because they had no idea what it was. It's one of those things, as soon as I read this article, a whole bunch of stuff fell into place that was all weird. And it's like, oh, he was on this weird-ass drug the whole time, and he was trying to sell it, and that's part of what he was doing in Belize. Yes. Also, it must be hard to try to sell drugs when you are on them. Well, I assume he had distributors ah, and stuff. True, you know, true. he's a business guy. Great. He's, he's yeah, good. He's, he's, good. he's good. very good at business. Yeah, he's I good at he's good at businesses. Yeah. I'm sure he's fine at that part. Um now, the writer on Arrowwood uh went on about his experiences. Okay. Quote more and more, this substance started to take control of my life. I would be up all night. Now, instead of focusing on the task at hand, my procrastination was amplified. Instead of the rush, I just got an energy boost. Something strange about this substance I began to notice, like it had hijacked my mind and started to control me, and involuntarily, I would be redosing without being fully aware. Then I started to binge a few days straight. I said to myself, I don't have anything to worry about. I'm not an addict. I'll taper and give it up for a week. It never happened. The cravings were too intense. My mind was wired to seek it. The cravings were most intense... The most intense I ever felt. This is similar to cocaine. If I have a bag of cocaine, I want to finish it. It also hijacks my mind in a similar fashion. Cocaine was more fiendish to me. Once the bag was done, I wouldn't have any desire to seek it again for a while. There were no cravings after the cocaine was gone, but there were strong cravings while I had alpha PHP. I would continue to snort it even though I knew that there was no point and I'm wasting it, but it is so hard to break that craving desire. This is what John McAfee might be on. Now, if the latest videos he's been posting are anything to go by, McAfee is definitely on this stuff. Because about two weeks before this episode will drop, John McAfee announced to the internet that the IRS had convened a grand jury in Tennessee to charge him, his wife, and four McAfee 2020 campaign workers with tax fraud. John admitted that he had not been paying taxes for the last eight years. Uh, He further announced that in order to evade the IRS, he would be conducting his presidential campaign in exile aboard a boat, sailing to and from various foreign ports. Yeah. (laughs) In a series of tweets that have just been quite the ride, he claims his boat has 30 high-tech firearms, and videos he has posted certainly show numerous guns among he and his crew. Uh, McAfee has a documentarian on board, what he's dubbed the Freedom Boat. Uh, he's claiming the government's trying to arrest him per- for political reasons. So he's trying to like seek asylum in the Exumas under the- He the... like wants that to be the reason. He wants that to be. No, John, you admitted you didn't pay taxes in yeah, eight years. That's what like, happens. He wants to be so baller. It really <laughs> mm-hmm. seems like he wants to be like a thug. Yeah. Anyway, what I wanted to point, I want you to watch one of the videos he posted on the second day of his exile because it really makes him look like he's on Alpha PHP. Oh, John, you I'm are gonna actually thick. before you play this, I'm going to read you one last description from this user talking about what the drug did to him. People around me could notice my addiction before I did. They noticed my pupils were strange. They noticed I wasn't eating much or at all, and they noticed how fast I was talking. They noticed my nose was stuffy. My family noticed my face was changing, but they weren't all that concerned, just that I looked different. My dad said I looked much weaker, with my hands all constantly shaky. Now, I'm going to play this video, and you tell me if this looks like a guy going through that exact fucking thing. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're probably wondering how I'm going to manage my presidential campaign from a boat. I have with me on this little speaker my campaign manager, Rob Lozier, in New York. We're going to explain it. First of all, we have thousands of volunteers. Rob and one of our other uh, volunteers are creating masks of my face. He looks like he's sitting in a massage chair. Like his whole body is moving. Yeah, he can't (laughs) stop moving. The entire time he talks, touching his nose. nose. Yeah. And it looks like he's consciously trying not to touch his nose. Yeah. But his hand just keeps flying up there. Yeah. I had a little Twitter interaction with him. And he started claiming like people, because I joked that he was on cocaine. Because that's what I thought. I hadn't read about the alpha PHP. And he was like, I'm not on cocaine. I'm a a 73-year-old man. You know, you lose control of your body and stuff. And I lived with my grandpa 
when he was dying of Parkinson's at age mm-hmm. 84. I know what it looks like when an old man loses control of his body. Right. I've also done a lot of cocaine, and I know what it looks like when people are railing amphetamines and other kinds of uppers. Right. It looks like that. <laughs> like, it, that is what it looks like his when you hands, do too much speed. It was uncontrollable. Yeah. Like, I've seen sign language people, like, you yeah. know, people who, like, interpret. I've seen interpreters move less. Yeah. Like, he's his hands were constantly moving. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's scary, right? He doesn't look healthy. No, not at all. Now, he's posted numerous videos from his boat exile. He seems to be safely in the Exumas now. He, at one point, put up, like, a chart manifest of, like, what's on the boat, and it was, like, seven brave soldiers, you know, one John McAfee, uh, 410 pounds of dogs, and he listed his wife as one terrifying black woman. (laughs) John McAfee. (laughs) Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right response. <laughs> and one angry black woman. Yeah. So you know we're we're equipped. Yeah. Look, I oh God, John. And his dogs look so confused and this all of those. Is why they people, don't belong on yachts. They don't. <laughs> They're dogs. <laughs> And this is also why people should not have this much money. Like, this yeah. man did not need this much money. He had no idea what to do with it. Mm-mm. He manifested this whole life. And it's been a really bad one for a lot of the people around him. Now, I will note that I haven't found any evidence yet that the IRS actually did convene a grand jury in Tennessee. That's what John McAfee says. I don't think that they did, because when the IRS comes to get you, they come to get you. They really do. Yeah. It seems like they they usually are pretty on the ball yeah, about that Yeah, they thing. pick you up, and they're like, get in, sis. <laughs> they yeah. don't let you flee on a boat? Absolutely not. <laughs> you don't get to leave the country know. when the IRS wants you. Maybe they slipped up. Or maybe. Or maybe. It had more to do with the fact that on November 15th, 2018, roughly a month before John would get on his boat and go on the run, he was found legally liable via default judgment for the death of Greg Fall, or murder of Greg Fall, I should say. He was also found legally liable in 2014 for the death of his nephew and that student at the Sky Gypsy Academy. Now, on November 16th, 2018, John tweeted about the judgment against him in the Greg Fall murder case. Quote, This was my 203rd lawsuit. I never answer them. I always default to whatever their lawyers claim. My first wrongful death was due to an airplane that crashed piloted by my student pilot. I was found liable. I owe nothing, own nothing, and no one has ever collected. So, it is possible at the end of all this that all of this madness, all of John McAfee's posturing with guns and his talk of drugs, that this is all more of an act. That this whole IRS thing, this whole presidential 2020 campaign, his flying to uh, the Exumas on a boat, that this is all just as much of a sham as his medical lab in Belize. That he's not, maybe even not on alpha PHP and bath salts. Maybe this is all an act too. And maybe rather than being some heart of darkness style tale of madness and paranoia, John McAfee is just an asshole who's okay with rape and murder, doing whatever he can to protect whatever remains of his fortune from his lawyers. Maybe... This is yet another scheme, like when he went to those newspapers back in the day, and he's just knows that he doesn't want Greg Fall's family to collect on anything, and so he fled the country. I don't know. Or he's a madman on drugs on a boat. Or both. It's got to be both. It's got to be. It's probably it's both. It's got to be both. He's probably both lying to everyone, on, and because on, he's definitely drinking a lot. He yeah. bragged that they had 1,800 quarts of liquor on the boat. The way that, which, why is he telling people? <laughs> like, I, I don't God. know, because he's a... Most people have enough shame to just, yeah. like, de- no shame, this guy. Also, like, he, <laughs> this is freaking crazy. He has been entangled with so many people's demise. Yeah. This woman's rape, these mm-hmm. people's murder. Yeah. And, like, he has to at least be a sociopath. Yeah. And he needs attention. Like, he needs people to be looking at him. He he poses with guns he like he's always a, has an entourage. Always has an for, entourage. For the last, like, 30-some-odd years, he's never not had an entourage. It feels like he's obsessed with celebrity. Like, he yeah. wants to be... He's, like, a con artist, but he also wants to be famous. He's got a lot of, like... He reminds me of Trump, but, like, a way smarter guy. This guy is intelligent, and that's he's not... He's not a... Du- of course, he's definitely not a dumb that. guy. He's, yeah. like, so smart. Yeah. But I also... I feel like... He's lost control to a degree because what he's doing now is not as well thought. Like his lie about being in financial trouble and then escape to Belize, that was a good con, well executed. Right. This seems like he may have lost the con a little bit. Like he may just be winging it right now. Yes. Because he's got some problems and he's old. His mind's not working as well. He's on drugs and drinking again. Right. I don't know. Maybe this is just 
a scammer in his twilight years. I would assume that everyone on this boat is on this drug, too. Yeah, maybe. I think they might more be a mix of people who are doing it for the money, like his, the boat pilot. It seems like a guy who's just like, yeah, dude, I, I just need yeah, money. Yeah, whatever. whatever. Load it yeah, up with the booze. Fine, sure. fine. <laughs> and his wife, I assume, probably also in it for the money. She doesn't look like she's... Like, none of the other people on the boat have the same sort of, like, jerky, spasmodic kind of air to them that McAfee does. I'm sure they're all drinking. I think it's a, probably a mix of true believers who thinks he's, like, libertarian Jesus and a mix of people who are just in it for the cash. But I really don't know. I don't either. It's weird. I hope his dogs are okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Sophie. I don't really care about any of the people on that boat, but I hope the dogs are all right. No, those people have willingly <laughs> rolled those the people, dice. Yeah, they, <laughs> they, they, they know what they're in for. You don't get on a boat with a motherfucker who looks like that. You, you don't get on a boat with this guy. With and, this yeah, guy. And have me feel bad when it goes wrong on you. Right. Yeah. Like, that black woman is on the second worst boat ride for black people ever, probably. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Like, there's obviously one boat ride that was a lot worse for us, but Ooh. this one is probably also pretty bad. Not as not as bad, but it's up there. <laughs> We're going to put it on the scale, because uh, that's a boat I would not be getting on. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, I will say, I've had a couple of friends who were sex workers, and a number of people that I've interviewed who did that job, and the one thing all of them have said about being a sex worker is you never get on a guy's boat. Never, ever, ever get on a rich guy's boat. Yeah, hell no. No. Water? Yeah. Water? No. (laughs) So you can throw my ass into the ocean? No. Hell no. (laughs) But I mean, he documented that she's on the boat. Yeah, no, I mean, There was only one terrifying black woman that is associated with him. That's true. And he's posted a lot of videos of their stuff. Oh, their stuff. Well, just like them flying, driving around the boat, them drinking, like a lot of like out of focus pictures of chunks of the boat. Like oh, it's God. really weird. But he's gonna live forever. He's too. he's got another twenty years in him. I'm Bruh. sure he's gonna kill at least three more people. <laughs> <laughs> Probably rape another couple of people. Oh no! Yeah, this guy, what a degenerate! Like yeah. he harmed so many. He's people. really hurt a lot of people. His own family, just a lot of people. So I got to ask, are you gonna vote for him in 2020? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's not that much different from Trump. I mean, he's... let's be real. I mean, I might pick him over Trump, but <laughs> like... <laughs> like, at least he's up front with this shit. You know, he's eloquent. He's got a lot of presidential qualities. John McAfee eventually tells the truth when he commits crimes. He got an army. Yeah. He got his own army that he's, he's a funding. Couple. Yeah, he's funding his own militia for no reason. And at least, you know, not paying taxes in eight years is still more recently than the president's paid taxes. Right, yeah. right. We could probably at least get his taxes. Yeah, he we, probably you know has I mean? a couple of tax returns somewhere. Right. If he hasn't, like, railed bath salts through the rolled up paper. Listen, and Trump <laughs> is doing Adderall. Which one is better? Adderall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right. Time release, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, take it back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lacey, you got some pluggables to plug. Yes, um, I love scams, so this was a great podcast for me to come on. Uh, my scam podcast, Scam Goddess, will be dropping soon, so follow me on Twitter at Diva Lacey, D-I-V-A-L-A-C-I, and on Instagram at Diva Lacey, D-I-V-A-L-A-C-I. On Instagram, you can watch my stories, that's where most of my activity is, I'll read your fortune uh, <laughs> that's my latest scam what do you think john mcafee's fortune is oh honestly it's looking like prosperity i don't even want to lie <laughs> he's, to you he's like, probably gonna be fine <laughs> he's yeah. got 20 more years of of good good alabaster <laughs> you know luck in him okay he'll be the governor of fucking california in <laughs> Listen, another three years he's, <laughs> i've never seen somebody take white privilege so far god not god bless you because i hope he does not bless you but uh he already got plenty <laughs> he got so much <laughs> he got so much god the world is so fucked up <laughs> it's really fucked damn. up damn um, uh, like, <laughs> talk about a man who's just fucking everybody over. Mm-hmm. What a monster. What a monster. Uh, you can find me, uh, speaking of monsters, on Twitter at I Write OK. Uh, you can find this podcast on the internet, BehindTheBastards.com. You can find us on uh, Instagram and uh, Twitter at, at BastardsPod. You can buy T-shirts on Tee Public. They're shirts. You put them on your body. They hide your nakedness. Uh, God doesn't like us to be naked, so yeah. Unless clothes. you just like to wear an AKA and um, no pants. Yeah, unless you want to go the McAfee route and just strap a gun to your chest and wear nothing else, which I approve of uh, and think should be 
the norm. Uh, I w- if police officers dressed that way, traffic stops would be more fun. Right. Just a, just a naked guy like walking around the side of the road and like a truck rolls by and a bunch of gravel gets like spun onto him and he's picking gravel out of his ass. I think that ass. levels the playing field of that like the cop's the... ego mm-hmm. and you know. Because everyone knows what the cop's packing regardless of what kind of gun he's got. Like, right. We know. Be a better world. Anyway, vote for me in 2020. <laughs> My only campaign plank is Naked Cops. Uh, I'm Robert Evans and this has been Behind the Bastards. I love about 40% of you.